Yeah, welcome back to Palmerton High School, where we are very proud and thrilled to bring you uh, the celebration of Palmerton Boys Basketball celebrating its centennial this year and also the 1956 team that finished as the state runner-up. And without further ado, let's go to the Master of Ceremonies, Bob Capasso, who has the uh, ceremony here for the Palmerton Boys Basketball Program. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special opening night here at Palmerton High School. I'm Bob Capasso from Blue Ridge TV 13, and we're being told that they cannot hear me across the room, so we will try and crank this up a little bit more. Let's see if that works. Could be the mic. See if that's any better. One, two, three. I think that's a little bit better for our courtside people because we have to make sure that we can all hear. And once again, good evening and welcome to a special opening night here at Palmerton. I'm Bob Capasso from Blue Ridge TV 13. We'd like to welcome everyone here and those of you watching on Blue Ridge Communications TV 13 tonight. It is a special opening night tonight. We kick off the centennial season of Palmerton basketball here at Palmerton and celebrate 100 years of Blue Bomber basketball. Way back in December of 1916, the Palmerton team took the court for the first time. That team finished five and two in a short season, but what it did was start a winning tradition of basketball here at Palmerton and it has been a basketball town ever since. Over the next century, the Blue Bombers would play over 2,300 games and win 1,000 307 of those. That is a 566 winning percentage. There have been 28 head coaches. Two of them have over 200 wins, three others with over 100 wins. And as you can see on the banner, I want to direct your attention to the banner up here in the corner. The Blue Bombers have won 20 league championships and seven district titles. Also, they have had eight 20 win seasons in their history. If you go to the right, you will see the thousand point banner. There have been eight 1,000 point scorers and one NBA player. So as you can see for a small community and a small school, there has certainly been a very large winning tradition. See, now it is also fitting that we have the Lee Heighton fans here. We welcome Lee Heighton here as well. <laughs> See, because this has been a great tradition between these two teams. Believe it or not, they have met for 168 times. This will be the 169th meeting between these two schools for Palmerton. That is the third most of any school that they have ever played behind Catasauqua and Northern Lehigh. So obviously these two teams have had great tradition and we wish both of them good luck for the coming season. Now many of you have what I hold in my hand. It is a program, it is great, I hope you will take one home. Each family is invited to take one home free of charge, and it shows the great history of Palmerton basketball here. And it is a, a special present from Palmerton basketball to this great fan base here. It's a very devoted fan base, especially the front row guys that are here at just about every ball game. Now, to make that happen, we would like to thank the support of St. Luke's University Health System, TN Printing, Penn Teledata, and of course, Hager Furniture for their great support of Palmerton basketball.
in that book, now if you turn to page three, we're going to start some arguments. I already had an argument from uh, some people about teams above and beyond these, about what was the greatest team in Palmerton history. In the program, you will see on page three, there are three that really stand out. Those are the 1931-32 team, the 1955-56 team, and the 1979-1980 team. Now, why do these three stand out? Now, they were all league champions. As you can see, there have been plenty of league champions. They all had over 20 wins and four wins in the district and state playoffs. Now, the 31-32 team actually doubled the output of their opponents, outscoring opponents 804 to 394. The 1955-56 team that you will actually meet in a few moments was the only team at Palmerton to play in a state final. And the 1979-1980 team shares the school record with 25 wins and was the only Palmerton team to score over 2,000 points in a season. Now, we are going to introduce one of those special teams, but before we do, we need to recognize somebody that was so special to this uh, community and honor that person. I don't think there was an athlete in Palmerton over the last several decades that was not touched by this man. We lost him just a few weeks ago, and we want to show our appreciation for Coach Gino, Gino Roberts. A very special man. He will certainly be missed by this community of athletes. All right. Now, this is not only the centennial, uh, centennial year for Palmerton basketball, but it is also the 60th anniversary of a very special team, the 1955-56 boys basketball team that went to the state final, the only team, the only boys basketball team at Palmerton to ever do that. Of course, coached by the legendary Wynn Evans and led on the court by co-captains Terry Eckhart, and Dr. Bob Milkvey. Now, believe it or not, that team started four juniors, but they also didn't start very well. In fact, they were only five and four before they really turned things on and made the charge going to the state finals. So tonight, we will welcome back the 1955-56 boys basketball team. Here we are. Okay, now, all, just about all are either here or represented. We start with some of those who were unable to be represented. The players, Calvin Barwis, he is down in Georgia. Uh, Neil Roth, who is also class of 57, is living in California. And Richard Craig, who has uh, passed, uh, was also part of that team, was unable to have family here to attend. Um, also unable to attend, student manager Edward Levi's. Other fa uh, faculty managers who have uh, passed, Vincent Kappas, Raymond Fry, and Oscar Blinn. And also one other who we thought we might have here, but Robert Newell uh, was not able to attend. We were hoping to have Robert Newell here. All right, now, we have either players or representatives here. And here they are, ladies and gentlemen, representing Pete Golden is his brother, Jan. Also on the team, Tom Wargo, and representing Tom, his wife Annette, and his grandson and current Palmerton athlete, Garrett Pershey.
Now, David Osterhout uh, has passed away, and his wife is living in Florida, was hoping to attend, but was not able to. What we do have here, and this has been donated to the school, and it is in fantastic shape, it is his Letterman jacket that uh, will be uh, donated to the school. Oh, and okay, and the next player, and now, now to the players, wearing the jacket is Mike Pritko, class of 57. Also on that team, Marty Renshaw. And class of 57, member of the team, Larry Silliman. <laughs> this is a beautiful jacket coming up here. Co-captain of the Palmerton team, class of 56, Terry Eckhart. <laughs> Uh, we do have student manager represented by his brother Pete David Blinn. Pete Blinn. <laughs> now representing Coach Wynn Evans, the legendary coach here at Palmerton, his daughter Penny and her husband, also her two, uh, Coach Evans' two nephews, Ralph, uh, Ralph Worley and Skip Worley. <laughs> By the way, coaching must run in the family. Ralph served as head boys basketball coach at Boyertown, and Skip was the head coach at Springfield High School and Ursinus College. And finally tonight, and it's a tough night for some of us here who work at BRC 13, the captain of that team and still the boys all time leading scorer here tonight. And he'll be represented by his family. Ladies and gentlemen, the family of Dr. Bob Milkfee. <laughs> Daughter Amy, grandsons Mason and Devin, Robert Bollinger, Amy's husband, and Carrie and Tanner Milkvy. Now, again, especially for the people watching in on BRC 13. Dr. Bob was a, not only a great friend of everybody here in Palmerton, but a dear, dear friend of those of us here at BRC 13. It was kind of hard wearing the Chuckies tonight and being there with only my pair. But we would like to show a token of our love and thoughts to Judy and the entire Milk V extended family. From Blue Ridge Communications, our president, Fred Reinhardt, and our general manager, Kim Bell, to present our token of our love for Dr. Bob. <laughs> now we have one more thing that concerns Dr. Bob in this group, if you would please, and you may have seen this outside, and hopefully you'll help keep this going. After Dr. Bob's passing, BRC announced that we've started a scholarship in Dr. Bob's name. It will be funded by BRC 13, and it will go each year to a deserving Blue Bomber senior basketball player, and 
they will be selected to receive a $1,000 scholarship. The award has been funded for four years, and the hope beyond that is that everyone will join in and help keep this going and make it an every year thing. So again, if you would like to help out, there is a, a way to uh, donate uh, in the, uh, the lobby. They will be taking donations, and in the future, we'll also be uh, taking donations to, uh, to help out the uh, scholarship fund. But once again, 60 years ago, this team went to the state finals, beat an Allentown team, one of the great teams in the Lehigh Valley, in the district final, went on to the state final. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for the 55-56 Eastern champion. I do know one more thing. Dr. Bob would be saying, why are you paying all this attention to me? There's a basketball game to be played. So ladies and gentlemen, let's have a great season. Let's play basketball. All right, guys, and uh, you just saw that ceremony um, honoring the 55-56 team. Um, we got a tribute for Bob Milkvey. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But I have Terry Eckhart here who played with Dr. Bob Milkvey. And uh, how neat was it for you tonight to go to, to be recognized here? And, and I mean, this is really a packed house. It's really an awesome event. Well, it's been a thrill for me for the last 60 years. I really, we had a great time playing, and, and Bob and I were friends for all these years. I stayed in Palmerton, had a business, and he did too. It was just great. It was great for everybody that uh, that played on that team. Uh, we stayed close until everybody started started dying. You know, we all just got too old. Uh, what are some of the memories you have from that year when you went to the state final? Well, a couple memories I have. Uh, as good a ball player as he was. Uh, he wouldn't. He was reluctant to shoot, and especially in practice. And one night we were having practice. It was about halfway through the season, and he wouldn't. The coach kept saying, "Shoot, Bob, shoot!" And he wouldn't shoot. He said, "Finally, he said, Bob, go home. Get the hell out of here. We don't want you here. Come back tomorrow. Maybe you'll feel like shooting." Uh, what What was it that made the team so good that year? I mean, this is such a small town, yet you were on such a big stage at the end of the season at the state final. No, I often thought about that. I think maybe because uh, we all we were all pretty. I don't want to brag, but we were all pretty intelligent. We didn't have any any really dummies on the team, and, and everybody listened. I think we were all coachable, and Win was a great coach. He was just a super coach. Uh, all right, I think that was our see, and we we stayed together all the time. We'd go to my house before every game and we my parents were already in the gym because they nobody could get a seat so they had to go early fortunately my father was a teacher he got in earlier but uh, then we'd 
you know, during the JV game, we'd go down to the gym and get dressed. And, uh, we stayed together and played together. Thank you, Terry. Congratulations on your honor tonight. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. And thank you. Same to you. Um, and we mentioned uh, Dr. Bob Milfi, obviously, uh, passed away this offseason. Meant a lot to me personally in my life. He was like a grandfather figure. Um, worked with him. I learned so much from him uh, commentating basketball games, not only about television, but about life. And um, a tough night for us that Dr. Bob's not here, but I can still feel him here in spirit. And um, just a final send off to Bob. Um, our creative services production crew put together a tremendous video remembering Bob. And we'll send you to break with this memory of our dear friend, Dr. Bob Milfi. Found them in the closet again. One year layover, but they're still hanging in there. Good old cons, ready for another season. Love it. 10th annual Al Keglovitz Spirit of Basketball Award is proudly presented to Dr. Bob Milkby and Mr. Bob Capasso, the 2012 Spirits of Basketball Award winners. This is not my award. This is our award. Well, you guess you know where I am. I'm among the crazies here, the Palmer and Rooting section. I've got my Chuckies on. I've got my... I've got my Lewandowski and Ava band on. And we're gonna go. I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. I know, I know, I know. Wiggins on the drive, drops it off. Isaiah Battle. Mama Battle, get the toaster out. It's jam time. And I'll tell you what, you miss, you crash the boards. You crash with everything you have. Remember, 116 left in the season. You've come this far, you give it everything that's left in you. Rhodes has a great three. And the Phillies are going. What a comeback! Unbelievable! Would you believe that? The Hershey kiss is on the floor. But Bob, this was a team effort. Homiak out of the game. Oh, you, you gotta, you just can't say enough about all these kids. Understand she's awesome out at the point situation. Comes up with the screen. If Kistler gets it inside and Hughes looks inside, he can go. Covers a lot of ground out front, makes it tar hard to penetrate. We got your present, Dr. Bob. Presenting the new Dr. Bob's board. Holy. I don't know what to do with such a mock. Oh, We're gonna go to the board now. Man, this takes the pressure off me. All year pressure's on me to find something to describe on that board. I got two of the greatest coaches in the area to help me out tonight. Threes and 33. We hope to put up as many threes as we can. Strickland up ahead. Look out! Whoa! Well. Maybe first time this year for us, but Mama Strickland, get the toaster out. It's jam time. 